Welcome to Relevance for Today, a show where you will be encouraged, inspired, and fed through the Word of God. You will find relevant teachings, tips, discussions, interviews, and more for both believers and even non-believers who are considering salvation through Jesus Christ. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to another show. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Relevance for Today. It's great to have you on board. Hey, I got on my Born Square t-shirt today. Born twice, right? Born twice. This one's by Clean Apparel. It's a blue shirt and basically for those of you listening, it has the word born written with the number two up in the corner because I was born first through my mom, and then second birth through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. Hey, you've tuned in to Kingdom Purpose and Potential series. This is part three. And of course, as always, if you haven't watched part one and two, please do me a favor. I want to encourage you to head over and watch them. And let's go through the reminders. So once again, in this important series, my goal as always is to uplift, motivate, encourage, and help give you some great starter information so you can get on the right road to find out more about your purpose and what your potential can be as a follower of Jesus Christ. Going through some gifts and things like that to spark an interest. That way you in turn will want to step up, hey, ask some questions with your leaders, with your pastors, uh, someone you trust as a minister, and help you grow and go from there. Sound good? And as a refresher, the definition of purpose, and once again, just to give them credit, I got the definition from faithword.org. It describes purpose as, it declares why you exist. It captures the heart of why you are on this earth and why Jesus died for you. It defines your life, not in terms of what you think, but what God thinks. It anchors your life in the character and call of God. Amen. Purpose also clarifies the non-negotiables. It identifies what never changes about who you are, regardless of circumstances. And potential can be defined as what you can do but have not yet accomplished. Or, once again, give credit to Sandra Maria, who wrote in her blog, Potential is that which has power or potency that can but has not yet come in existence or into sight. It is unexposed ability, reserved power, untapped strength, hidden talents, dormant gifts, and more. So these two words, as I mentioned in the first two parts of the series, these two words are things we all must learn about as followers of Jesus Christ. Knowing our kingdom purpose and kingdom potential will truly change our lives in a mighty way. Amen? So here we go. So today I want to share another powerful passage from the Bible. This time we are digging into some spiritual gifts. Of course, keep in mind the Apostle Paul is writing to the churches in Corinth in this passage and addressing some things to the body of Christ. But as I've mentioned before many times in other episodes, we are the body of Christ, which means we too can glean off his teachings to help us grow and be who God created us to be. Make sense? Learn. The Pauline teaches, as they call them. Paul, the Apostle Paul wrote 13 books. And Pastor Glenn Blakeney taught me something one day. You know, I already knew that the Apostle Paul had written the most books in the New Testament. But Dr. Luke, right? Luke had written the most chapters. Isn't that cool? Because, of course, he wrote Luke and he also wrote the book of Acts. So if you add up all the chapters, Dr. Luke wrote more than the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wrote more letters, more books in the in the New Testament, though. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, but that's just one of those neat little nuggets. If someone does a little quiz or wants to, you know, do some tests for their students or whatever it might be, it's neat to, to learn little nuggets like that. Just a little food for thought. So we're going to read 1 Corinthians 12, and mine titled, and this one is Spiritual Gifts. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us. I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, 
you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. And of course, as you know, that's the Holy Spirit. Continuing on with verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. I'm going to stop right there for a few seconds and repeat that verse. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. You hear that? We all have been given a spiritual gift, and on top of that, the most important part is for us to remember that the gift is not for us. It's not for me. It's not for you. It's for helping each other. There's no selfish gifts, so please remember that at all times. It's not one of those, look at me, I can prophesy. No, it's look at what the Lord can speak into your life through the words that the Holy Spirit's guiding me to tell you, but it's not for me. The words are for you, right? So let's continue on with verse 8. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. And of course, it continues on. Now, in my Bible, the heading has written, one body with many parts, and I like that. So continuing on with verse 12. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Now I'm going to stop right there because I want to go back to the one body with many parts. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up the whole body. So that's what it is with the body of Christ. So in that portion, I always think of the military. And I can speak about that because I was in the military. I was in the Air Force for seven and a half years. But what I can speak about is this. In many ways, not just being in the Air Force, me being in weapons, and this guy is the crew chief of the B-52 or whatever plane we were working on. This other person works in avionics. This other person works in the fuel system. But we all were different parts of that body, but we all came together and worked together to get that B-52 ready to take off to go to war or whatever was going on. Does that make sense? So we had to come together as a team. But there's an even greater example that I use, and that's the example of the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. We, if you're in the service, thank you for your service, or you served, you're a veteran, thank you for your service. One of the things we all know very well is we all like messing with each other. Marines pick on the Air Force, you know, the Army, the Navy. We all just josh around with each other and pick on each other. But here's the key. We might joke around with each other, but when we were in the Gulf War, for example, we all came together as a unit. We were the military, the United States military force was the body. Does that make sense? Just like all the parts make up the body of Christ, all the military branches make up the United States military. We came together. Air Force did their jobs. Army did their job, Marines, the Navy, everybody worked together. We came together as one, and I'm clasping my hands together for those of you who are listening to this message on podcast. But we all came together. You know what I'm saying. Veterans out there, you know exactly what I mean. We came together as a team from all across the board, and we worked together, and we kicked butt together. That's what we did. 
And when I see that and when I rem reminisce on those days about how we went to the Gulf War and we took care of business, I think about how the body of Christ, how much more can we do as spirit-filled individuals versus the military, but as spirit-filled individuals coming together as the body of Christ to take this world by storm through love and compassion and the word of our testimony, right? That's what it's about. The blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, coming together as a unit to reach people all around the world and be that blessing as a team, the body coming together, one body with many parts. And so when I read that passage of scripture, I always reminisce about the military and things like that. So I just wanted to share that to just give you an idea of the importance of this whole body thing. So verse 14 Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not the part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less of the part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part, right? Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And so right there, the first thing that comes to mind for me when I read this verse is the worship center's door greeters. And I mentioned that in the last episode briefly. But the door greeter, do you realize they are the first face people see when they show up Sunday morning? If the greeter's in a sour mood, their vibe can sometimes rub off on the people coming into the service. If they are welcoming, people feel welcome. If they are sour-faced... <laughs> Like Jensen Franklin said, they've been looked like they've been baptized in lemon juice. If they're sour faced, that new person who just decided to come to the church for the first time goes to walk through that worship center door and sees you sour faced up, it may turn them off immediately. I personally can say, you know, back years ago, I've experienced that before. And sadly, I never returned due to the vibes I picked up as I entered a particular worship center. So let's continue. Verse 23. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. And I can relate to that right there once again with the military. You know, when we lose a brother or sister in arms, that affects all of us. It doesn't matter if you're in the Air Force, Navy, Marines, Army, Coast Guard, whatever branch of military service you're in. To see a casket with that American flag laid across it, you know we've lost another brother or another sister in arms. And it's heartbreaking. You know, I, some of you guys can relate to this. Some of you veterans can relate to this. You're sitting back, Facebook post comes up, and it's a video of a mother or father coming home to greet the family. And the father shows up at a child's school classroom and the child turns around and sees the parent and just runs into the parent's arms. And the next thing you know, I'm blubbering like a baby crying, you know, or funerals. Oh, my word. Military funeral, um, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, all these different events happen. And as soon as they start playing taps and you start hearing that trumpet playing, tears are being shed. You know, we're connected and the same way the body should be the same way. When one part suffers, we all should suffer. You should feel that because of the love that we're supposed to have for one another. And I don't want to get on another different trail, 
But at the same time, I'm trying to form this in your mind, this connection. We read it and take it for granted sometimes. But when someone like me explains it as far as looking at the military side of things, looking at men and women linking arms to fight for their country and so forth and for the security of the people, you start seeing a different angle. You know, as the body of Christ, we're fighting for people's souls here through the help of the Holy Spirit. We're wanting people to be saved. We're wanting people not to go to the lake of fire when that day comes. And so it's important for us to also take up arms. Our weapon is this Bible, right? The Word of God. We stand on the Word of God. The Word of God's under attack every day by the enemy. We stand on this Word. Okay? So, verse 27. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, and then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. Are all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. And I like that right there. And I'll say that again. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. And remember, once again, the gifts are for us helping one another, lifting each other up, edifying one another, edifying the non-believer. They're for the non-believer as well. You know, the key is, yes, we must all desire the helpful gifts because it's all about serving one another and being helpful. The passage that follows this chapter, of course, is the love passage in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, because without love, all these gifts are really worthless. And we must serve with a loving heart and step up in our purpose for the kingdom of God. That is truly key. Having that love, I mean, you can't sit back and prophesy over somebody if you don't have any love for them and you hate them or you don't like them, then what's going to happen is when you go to use that prophetic gift, if you have that gift, your mind's going to start twisting your, th your, your personal feelings are going to get mixed in with what the Holy Spirit wants to share with that person. That's why love is key. We must serve with a loving heart. And so that's why I encourage you to dig deeper in the Word as I share these shows because there is so much to learn. And just like I said about Indiana Jones in a previous series that I did, I talked about how this Word, the Word of God, is like getting that journal from Indiana Jones's father. And you go in, and Indiana Jones is going on a mission to find lost treasure or to find lost the lost grail or to find biblical treasure and different things like that. And so what he ends up doing is he gets a journal or he gets those nuggets and he digs in and he starts going from one spot to the other. Okay, I just read about all these gifts, but wait a minute. It says without love, these gifts are useless. I have to use love. So then I learn about love. Then I learn about the gifts. And then I go from there and I keep digging in and learning. And that's why I said dig deeper in the word because that's what's going to help you grow. There's so much to learn, folks. And unfortunately, it seems like we just don't take the time to better ourselves when it comes to the kingdom of God. That's why these messages are so important. But in the world, we will go to college, right? We'll sit back and and instead of digging in this word and learning who we are as brothers and sisters in Christ and who we're supposed to be for the kingdom of God, but yet we'll go to college or go in the military and get all the courses and trainings we need to be the most productive individual we could possibly be in this world. Yet when it comes to our kingdom responsibilities, we just don't have the time or the interest. And that's where the shaking of the foundation comes from, where it's like, okay, guys, we got to shake the foundation. We got to get into this thing. We got to get in the word. We got to learn who we are. The days on this earth are numbered. We don't know when the Lord's going to return, but we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. And we need to step up and be who we are called to be. 
That's why I'm encouraging you from my heart, from my spirit, man, to rise up and learn your kingdom purpose so you can climb towards your kingdom potential. God has given you a gift. So it's time to find out what it is and step in with both feet. Amen? So in the next episode, I'll be sharing with you all the list of gifts as well as the definitions. And we'll continue on from there. And I hope this show really encourages you folks. I hope this series is really encouraging you and I look forward to hearing from you. But let's go ahead and pray. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you once again for the opportunity to share on this series. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's leading for me to put this together because it's all about encouraging my brothers and sisters to be who they're called to be, but also to encourage me to be who I'm called to be. And Lord, I thank you for being able to do relevance for today and spiritual spotlight and the TV show. I just don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly because it's a responsibility and I would thank you for that. But Lord, I just pray for all my listeners and watchers. I pray that we can reach more people I know I talk about the two people in China a lot, but we could reach more people in China, people in other countries, other locations, towns, cities, states, continents, that the walls get knocked down so people can hear your messages, not just from me, but from other potential teachers out there. But I just thank you for that. I thank you for the internet that we're able to reach folks all around the world. But Lord, I just pray right now for all my listeners and watchers that they will know who they are, come to know who they are, come to know who you are, learn about their potential, learn about their purpose so they can step up and be who you called them to be. So I just thank you for all these things and I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. We've got one more part of this series coming up. Stay tuned for that. Don't forget, take those notes. Re-listen to this show if you have to. Take some notes. Read the passages that I shared in the Word of God. Get to know who you are. Lean on the Holy Spirit for guidance. Hey, with that being said, as always, don't forget about Spiritual Spotlight Podcast, folks, where I inspire you for five minutes or less. Also, check out Relevance for Today podcast show or the TV show, depending on which one you're watching it on right now. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave me some feedback, give me a rating so it'll push the podcast up further. Also, I believe Google Podcasts is out there as well, as well as a few other locations that are doing the same thing. Samsung also has podcasts. You can get on there and listen there as well. You can listen to me in the car. If you've got the phone set up, you can listen to me on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you might feel comfortable. But with that being said, thank you for all you do listening to me, sharing your mess, my messages, commenting, and so forth. I look forward to hearing from you. And if you find out what your gifts are and your callings and your purpose, let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you folks. Let's get a communication going. Let's get a conversation going. With that being said, hey, love you all. Take care of yourselves. Peace.